Welcome back once again, YouTube. Today behind me, my tractor is sitting on the trailer, already warming up. And uh, I'm gonna walk you everybody through a full service on the Coyote CK2610. Uh, it should pretty much all apply for the 35 as well as the 4010. But uh, we're gonna do the front axle, the engine oil, uh, as well as the transmission hydraulic filters. And uh, yeah, let's begin. so before we get our service here i like to try to get everything together that we're going to need um creeper just for laying under the tractor the funnel uh i like this one it's got the flexible tube on it the engine oil is not too bad to get to but the fill point for the hydraulic and transmission um, oil is uh kind of a pain just for the upper three point lift arms in there so i like i said i like to have that flexible funnel the big drain bolt under the back of the transmission is a 30 millimeter socket. Um, I guess that would equate to inch and a quarter, maybe. I don't remember. No, maybe it's only inch and an eighth. Um, but you're gonna need a 17 millimeter for the engine oil drain. And then 14 millimeter does the, all three drain bolts on the front axle, as well as the drain bolt um, near the um, front drive shaft. Oil filter wrench, these adjustable ones are pretty great uh, versus a strap wrench. So, and then I got two gallon jugs. You're gonna need six quarts of 1540 Rotella T. Uh, this is a T5 synthetic blend. <clears throat> I bought a five gallon pail of John Deere High Guard. Um, last time I did this, I used Mobile 424. It's what the manual recommends. Um, everyone online talks really highly about it. Good luck trying to find it right now. Um, you know, I'm shooting this in July of 2020 and, it, or sorry, 2022, and uh, there's not a lot available on the market currently. It seems that, at least for hydraulic fluid. Um, up here in, the, in way northern New York, um, we're using the low viscosity just because of winter temperatures, but <clears throat> High Garden is, I mean, probably one of the better hydraulic fluids out here. I think I paid $123 for the five gallon pail. And uh, I mean, it's good enough that a lot of the performance drag race guys use them in turbo 400 transmissions and stuff. So it's good stuff. And then for the front axle, the tractor from the factory is filled with hydraulic oil. Um, and it's pretty highly recommended from just about everybody to get that out as soon as you can um, and replace it with gear oil. So this is just cheap traveler stuff from tractor supply, but uh, you know, any gear oil really will work in the front axle. And then you're gonna want a couple different drain pans. Uh, the reason I say that is, is because I use the big one. It's got a lot of capacity in it to do the rear end and the transmission. Uh, the manual says it takes six gallons. I only bought a five gallon pail. Last time I did this, it took just under five gallons. Now I'm sure six gallons is the total system capacity, but you'll never get every bit of oil out of it. Plus you've got all the oil that's in the hydraulic cylinders, the hydraulic hoses on the loader, all that stuff. So typically five gallons is enough to do the job, but I still don't think this container is large enough. So what I'll do, you'll see is halfway through, I'll make a huge mess putting the drain plug back in, drain this into an empty five gallon pail that I've got ready and then drain it again. And then these two, I'm gonna use when we do the front axle and you'll see that because the drain bolt is pretty close to the front wheels. I guess 
if you didn't have a drain pan you could use that was pretty narrow on the edges, you could probably just uh, jack it up, take the front wheels off, but you'll see that here in a moment. All right, so I've got plenty of light under here. Um, I did add the flashlight just to help light everything up for the cameras. So we're gonna grab our 30 millimeter socket and uh, break our bolt free, our drain bolt free under the transmission. And like I said, this one usually makes a pretty good mess just because of the rate that it comes out of here. Um, to help with that, I am gonna keep the fill plug in it. Now, you'll notice the soil is pretty clear. Uh, this is this tractor's third, third service at 138 hours. And while this is draining, I'll give you the quick story on that. Um, so this past winter, this was probably January, late January, early February of 22, uh, we got a good snowstorm. <clears throat> and so I was out plowing the driveway, plowed the neighbors, and we have a pond. It's uh, about 50 by 150, and we had ice skate, ice skated on it quite a bit. In fact, I <clears throat> taught the little one how to skate this year on it, you know, so it's kind of a special thing for us. So, uh, you know, we just got eight, 10 inches of snow. So the week prior to the snowstorm, I had gone out there and drilled it. I've gotten an inch and a the quarter drill bit that I use for punching holes in the floor of our house that is 16 inches long and I had all but an inch and a half of it to get through the ice and if you look every other chart in the world tells you that 14 and a half inches of ice is just about adequate to put a tractor trailer on well apparently it's not at least it's not enough to put this tractor on uh, about a week later and a 136 degree thaw in between. Apparently the stream that runs through the pond was enough to erode enough of the ice that uh, I was on my fourth or fifth pass plowing snow and it broke through. And it wasn't a big deal at first. The front tires had broke through, but where it was in the water, it wasn't too bad of a spot. I was only a foot and a half, two feet deep, front tires were under, but I wasn't quite to the floorboards, it was, wasn't a big deal. And then as the water started to pour up onto the ice, uh, that's when the ice got heavy and the rear tire broke through. Uh, so now I got a problem. So like I said, I'm, I'm up, you know, floorboards deep. And uh, <clears throat> at this point, you know, like I said, it's starting to become an issue. So. Let me pause the story here real quick. I'm going to start to, I'm going to put this drain plug in now and go dump my drain pan before it gets, gets too much more full. It's just feeling pretty heavy, so. All right. I'll be back. So I'll continue my story from my truck. Uh, as I'm on my way to Napa to go get the filters that I have forgotten. Uh, so, <clears throat> rear tires broke through. At this point, like I said, kind of an issue, right? Because now the water's up to the floorboards, but the exhaust is above water, the engine's above water. I'll, I'll be all right. So I start using the snow plow uh, to kind of push myself around because the ice was so thick uh, and heavy that I was having a hard time moving the tractor. So I was breaking ice. I got myself turned around and I got up on the bank to kind of climb myself up and out. And <clears throat> that's when I realized that I got the front tires up, but the rear tires would not climb up the bank. So I thought, okay, no big deal. I will, uh, I'll turn around back up the bank because I can use the loader to push my, push the rear tires up if I need. And then just pick the front tires up with the loader and <clears throat> and uh, at that point, you know, I can get myself out, get the front tires up over the bank, right? Well, that worked great uh, until the rear tires came up on top of the bank and the front tires went down even lower and the air intake that sits right over top of the battery that Coyote claims is very easy to access, which I'll give them that. It's very easy to access. 
but it's also very easy for the water to access. And it sucked water, and the center rod found out that it wasn't strong enough to compress water. So at approximately 82, 83 hours, the engine got replaced under insurance. Uh, so I had done a whole service prior to that at 50 hour mark, like Coyote recommends. So, you know, I only had 30 or so hours on that oil, but at that point, I couldn't trust any of it. So the transmission got drained, uh, the engine oil got drained, obviously, as they replaced the engine, and the front axle got drained. Uh, so I drained the front axle before it went to the dealer. Uh, I left everything else because I knew the engine was coming out and getting replaced as it was. Um, so, you know, I had put hydraulic oil back in the front axle because my thought was, if there's still water in there, the thinner hydraulic oil might help carry it out compared to the gear oil. And I, it was dirt cheap hydraulic oil that I had kicking around anyways. So I realized that, uh, you know, might as well waste that instead of buying gear oil. So, that's why I say this is now its third service. All right, so now that our last little bit is uh, draining out of the big plug in the rear, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start draining the front axle. So, as you can see, I've got the, uh, one of our smaller pans or whatever I guess you could call it here that's tighter to the wheel. And then you're gonna take your 14 millimeter and break that open. Yeah, see the water coming out of there? And this had already been drained after I uh, put it in the pond. So it's definitely a good thing doing this. So now I'm gonna go get the other side cracked open. So in here are seal is sticking to the, oh, there it goes. Sticking to the axle. That's the other thing you're gonna notice too as you're doing the service. Um, there's no reason to really reef down any of these bolts crazy tight. Every single one of them has a, uh, a rubber crush washer on it. So unlike a copper crush washer or whatever, uh, there's no reason to ever crank these down crazy tight. So now we're gonna let that drain and uh, we'll go get the drain plug back in the rear. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you clean your magnet off too. Um, I'm sure you'll have a little bit of metal on there. That's normal, I mean, as you shift gears in a non-synchronized transmission, it's apt to grind occasionally. And I'm gonna snug that up again to that crazy tight. Get off. We'll slide our drain pan forward and we'll do our low spot here for the front drive shaft. And that's also 14 millimeter. All right, now that this is done dripping, go ahead and get the drain plug back in. Okay. Again, wipe that clean. Next up, we do our hydraulic filters here. We've got uh, hydro on one side and we've got the transmission on the other. So if you have a manual transmission, 
then this one will not, uh, you won't have, but uh, on the HST models, which I'm assuming are the more, most common, you'll have a filter here on each side. Just let that sit and drain. All right, so while the uh, transmission and the front axle is doing its last little bit of draining here, I just wanted to go over real quick the filters we're using. So I went to Napa. Um, they did not have the oil filter. Uh, I already had this from my last service, and I don't know why I bought two of them before. So we've got a Wix 51324 for our engine oil filter. And then uh, I believe the HST filter was this 1621 Napa Gold. And then uh, we've got a 7098 is the hydraulic filter. And uh, we're going to make sure we write the hours and the date on all our filters before we change them. This filter is a good time to get on here with these hoses to your loader here. So, helps to kind of hold them up out of the way. Oh, you're getting it in there. And that one goes on like so. This one here is our hydrostatic filter because it says so right there. If you notice, there is a difference between these filters. The hydraulic filter for the loader has much bigger area inside of the o-ring here so you really can't mess well, up which one's which but it kind of would have been nice if they had put two of the same filters on it you know because if you stock stuff in your garage it's just like one less spare you're gonna have sitting around because these could be kind of easy to damage if you're driving over rocks and sticks and stuff all right so for our next part here we're going to use our 17 millimeter and break our engine oil drain out loose. I apologize for this one's shaky. My tripod will only go so low. And it's so close to the floor that I can't lay my phone against the floor. It's looking pretty black for 50 hours on it. So we'll let this first one drain for a little bit and then I'll crack the second one here because of the U shape of the pan, the way the front drive shaft here kind of cuts the pan in two. And then we'll put all our drain plugs back in, especially now that our front axle's done draining, and uh, start filling this thing back up. All right, so now that our front axle's done draining here, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall our drain bolts for this. However, we are not quite done because there's a third drain bolt in this right here, right under your steering cylinder. So, shouldn't get much out of this one after you do the lowers or anything. All right, well, at least we tried. Now we'll go around and do the other side.
All right, so I'm gonna wipe our drain bolt, engine oil drain bolts off, I should say. Go ahead and reinstall those. There is no magnets on these ones, like the uh, transmission is. Wipe these up, and with our 17 millimeter socket, snug them back down. Okay, so the last part of our equation here is just drain the engine oil filter. Um, Unfortunately, with this one, there is no way to not make a mess all over the front axle, unless you, I guess, wanted to put some cardboard or whatever here, but it cleans up easy enough. Besides, front axle is cast iron, and last time I checked, oil was a rust preventative, so can't be that bad for it, right? But it's not that bad of a mess. So I am gonna to try to put a little bit of oil in this filter um, with the filter being vertical, or sorry, horizontal. It's uh, not as easy as if it was a vertical filter because now everything tries to run right back out of it. But just for our sake of oil pressure on first startup, try to get a little bit in here without making a tremendous mess. Now, I do have one pet peeve when it comes to oil changes. You know, you're always told to make sure you lube the filter here, or the O-ring on your filter here. Well, when you take the filter off, doesn't it leave a nice oily mess on here? So what's the purpose of lubing this O-ring if there's already oil on the pedestal, right? All right, so that's done. Don't mind the dent my uh, oil filter box gave out the second I walked onto the concrete floor. So everything's labeled, easy enough to see. So now uh, we'll pull our oil fill cap off here, clean our dipstick. We've got to do our front axle and uh, the rear around back. So when it comes to filling the engine oil, just pull our oil fill plug out. Stick our funnel in, and the engine holds six quarts. So, if my math is right, one and a half gallons.
right, so for our next step here, putting the hydro oil in, I wish I had remembered that it's best to do this with the lift arms up just so you have more room to get your funnel past the upper lift arms here. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pour as much into the five gallon pail as I can. And then after that, I'm going to just pour the five gallon pail, I think into one gallon containers or possibly my empty jug from my Rotella and then continue filling it with that. Either way, I see a little bit of a mess getting made here. So I'm actually gonna go put a drain pan underneath this. Just in case. All right, so now that I got the uh, rear end filled, I'm going to start it up. We're going to make sure our oil pressure light goes off soon, because if we don't, if it doesn't, then we've obviously got some sort of an issue. It's too low on oil, but I got six quarts in there. It should be good. And then uh, I'm going to raise the loader up out of the way. That way we've got easier access to the front diff uh, fill. And after it starts, uh, I will shut it off once the loader's up, and I'll check the oil level and check the engine oil level. All right, so we started it up. Uh, the oil pressure light did come on for about five seconds or so and then went right off. So that's a good sign. So now, I'm gonna put our funnel in there. That's a funnel meant for DEF fluid in trucks. And uh, seems to do a good job for transmissions. So, so I got that one. So let's check our engine dipstick first. Since that's the most important one. there just slightly below the full mark so that looks perfect now let's go ahead and start dumping in our front axle gear oil this is another one you probably want a drain pan under even though I don't currently because if you were to accidentally overfill the axle and it flowed out of your funnel or your funnel fell off or you overfilled your funnel you're going to make a tremendous mess and gear oil is always the best to just try to clean out of a concrete floor. Even one that's relatively smooth like this one, it's that porous concrete just loves soaking this sticky, stinky crap up and makes it a real good time to try to get out. So this was a two gallon jug, I believe. And it wasn't very full, so there's that. I'm going to check the level now, and I've got two other quarts to add to it if I need. And every time I do a threaded dipstick like this, I always thread it all the way in. So we're just touching the bottom of it. So we are definitely gonna need a little bit more. I'm kind of wishing I had bought three quarts cause I really like to change the gearbox a little on that motor. But...
All right, we'll check it once again here. And now we're right there at full mark. Perfect. Now I can do my mower gearbox while we're at this and my extra core. While you're doing the service on your tractor, it's not a bad time to go and actually check your air filters. Um, this one was new in February when my new engine was put in because this was covered in mud and water and ice and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, so this doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it. Um, <clears throat> I've been checking it pretty regularly anyways. So I knew it looked okay. Uh, it's also a good time to go through and do your fuel filter if it's been a while since you've done that. But again, this one's pretty new. And uh, it's not a bad time to also go through and hit all your grease points as well, especially the ones under the tractor that are rather inconvenient to do, but since you're already under there, right, it's a perfect time to do it. Now I've gone ahead and put the loader down and I'm going to check our transmission dipstick here. Again, stick that all the way down and we are right here so looks like we're pretty good that's why I say <clears throat> that was an entire five gallon pail I know the manual says it holds six quarts but <clears throat> that must just include the oil that's in the loader and the cylinders as well as the uh, you know other nooks and crannies in the transmission that you can't get when it's being drained so no point in buying six quarts, just get a five gallon pail. Well, there you have it. There's another tractor video done and out of the way. Um, if, any, if there's anything else you guys would like to see with the CK series, uh, let me know. You know, um, so I've covered so far how to turn the fuel pump up on your 2610, uh, the results of that, and now a service video. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is I bought a Plano kind of tackle box, ammo box thing, but it's not like the 50 cal metal ammo cans that you've seen, or ammo, yeah, containers, uh, that you've seen the guys mount on the fenders for storage. Um, so I'd like to figure out how I'm gonna get this mounted behind the rear seat. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. And uh, like I said, if there's anything else you wanna see, let me know, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, ring the bell, that way next time I post another video, you guys get a notification. You can hurry up and watch it. Thanks for tuning in again.